very unfortunate because when we came to study here, uh, the English medium had changed to uh, single only. Uh, and therefore, uh, unlike my other members of my family, we were not able to go to Trinity. So, but uh, all, all my other um, cousins and brothers and uncles, they all, they all went to schools here in Sri Lanka. I was, when I was released from prison, uh, I came to Sri Lanka and I started writing. Uh, uh, I started working for Mr. Yeah. Uh, um, he was, I think, heading um, Sunday Island at that yes. time. Uh, and also the Lanka Guardian. Mervyn uh, Silva and Garmini Virakun. Again, Garmini, uh, Mr. Virakun uh, is, is very instrumental in pushing me uh, towards investigative uh, and, and better writing. Mm -hmm. Um, and also, uh, uh, we, uh, I was therefore, through him, able to start understanding uh, journalism uh, uh, and the value of it. I may mainly worked with Mr. Virakun. I didn't necessarily, I didn't have a, I did, did have a desk there, yeah. uh, but I kept on traveling and in, in Sri Lanka, yeah. and then I kept on writing through my travels. The takeover of Kang Kangasundra at that murder of Jerry De Silva, okay. uh, 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 I, uh, 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 I think that was for me quite shaking, uh, uh, when Jerry, was, Ms. Jerry De Silva was murdered, yeah. he was the chief of staff at that point, okay. I think yes. he was after Denzel Kovacadu. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, for me, uh, uh, because I had that night, the, the, I think just two nights before, had a cup of tea with him. And then suddenly uh, uh, we was blown up. And then to see all these beautiful places, when we were, I went, you know, uh, all throughout our teenage and twenties, uh, when I lost my youth in jail, but any minute that I'm able to be free, I come to Sri Lanka a lot. And, and my childhood is very much connected to uh, my life, even, even, even though we weren't going to school here, because Half my family was always in here going to school. We spent most of our time here in, in, in Colombo and in Kandy. I, I, you know, I worked very hard, during, especially during the last year, uh, with a lot of assistance from a number of Sri Lankan leaders, which um, I don't think I have the liberty to mention the names, and, and, but I, I'm sure they would know who they are and I'm, I would always be very thankful for them, um, um, and it's it's we've been working very hard on this, um, and now we're fortunate to have a, an understanding, and, and and I'm very happy that uh, former president is Chandrika Kumar Tunga Bandar Naik, Bandar Naik Kumar uh, um, Chandrika, uh, uh, the former president has welcomed uh, our, our our joint efforts. Yeah. Uh, and I think, uh, um, you know, Sri Lanka uh, can solve issues in the Maldives. I've always found, uh, you know, uh, Sri Lanka to be a miracle. I always thought, now you try and tell me a country that has come out of 20 years of civil war with their democratic institutions intact. And, uh, go to Latin America, go to any country and find a country who's had a civil war for 20 years and bloody at that, but maintaining the judiciary working. I mean, the people in this country would complain about the fact that it's not up to their standards. But look from looking from the outside, uh, uh, you know, uh, you've had free and fair elections. Your TV channel is surviving, these are surviving. Uh, you know, this, this, uh, your, your young people who tweet and use the Facebook are not uh, pulled into jail every day. You know, there's, there's so much beauty happening in this country. And one thing that I, I really hope Sri Lanka would focus itself on is becoming carbon neutral. We got so much foreign investments for yeah. these projects, yeah. but unfortunately our government fell. Yeah. But these, these projects, these investors are still there. Yeah. And I am very sure that they would be very happy to invest in Sri Lanka. Now, I'll give you one example. Sri Lanka produces 1,300 megawatts of diesel-generated electricity. 
at a cost of 30 cents a unit. Yes. Yeah. Now, uh, you could do the same yeah. with renewables, with, yeah. with, with photovoltaic, with solar at yeah. 20 cents a unit. And you would be saving 1.1 billion dollars a year if you make this switch. To suggest that you know I got into my situation is uh, uh, <laughs> is a series of events since I was born yeah. and, and long before that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. now the people of the Maldives, yeah. uh, when when we came into government in 2008, wanted, in my view, three main things, in the, and they spelled it out in the constitution. They wanted a new executive, which they got in 2000 through the 2008 election. They wanted a new legislature which they got through the 2019 uh, parliamentary election. They also wanted a new judiciary, which they didn't get. Because there was a transitional judiciary, and um, with the new constitution, uh, we had to transfer that into a permanent judiciary. Mm -hmm. And the constitution had spelled out what you had to do for that. And they specifically, so this meant but our old judiciary just simply went in and replaced, became themselves, they, they swore themselves into their new positions. Now, so we had therefore a number of issues with the judiciary. The people had a number of issues. And finally, I, I, I'm again not suggesting that this was right. Uh, the, minist the, the defense ministry uh, uh, took a judge and isolated him. Now he was the criminal court judge. Um, I, I think, you know, my what I was see, seeing at that time was, what do I do? Do I, you know, would, would I have to kind of, can I get the military to release the judge by asking them to do it? Did I have that kind of clout and strength within that institution, which has been built for 30 years by the previous regime, which we have not we had we hadn't removed one person from the military, only the chief of staff. But the chief of staff who came in was the deputy chief of staff. We had not removed one person from the police. You know, it's very important that Sri Lanka has a view on the Maldives, and and that you keep focus on the Maldives. It's stability of the Indian Ocean will depend on stability in the Maldives. Uh, and in my view, Seychelles, Mauritius, Maldives, and Sri Lanka. In my view, of these four Indian Ocean Islands, of course Sri Lanka is the biggest. It has 20 million people. It has 500,000 people in its territory. It, 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 has, a, it has the biggest economy. Um, and I think, uh, and, and, and also growing. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, in my view, Sri Lanka must play a more robust role in maintaining order, in maintaining stability in the Indian Ocean. I think we have to empower families. Instead of going for these bigger economic zone models of the 1950s, 40s and 50s, now, okay, here you have a lot of labor. In the Maldives, you do not have a lot of labor. So whatever you do must be more capital intensive, intensive. Not, not so much labor. Now, so going with these mega projects doesn't work in the Maldives, and it will not work in the Maldives. So what we tried to do was to bring in, for instance, local tourism, guest house tourism, and to see if households can make a little bit of more money and, and try to increase their income levels. Uh, we believe that this is a very, very good model. Now, one of the islands is called Himafushi, which is near Mafushi, which is near Mali. Now, again, almost all families of Mafushi have start, started sending their children to school here. We fish pole and line. We fish. We do sustainable fishing, and and and, and our efficiency is also good. We, we land about 280,000 tons of tuna a year through Poland line on a, in a good year. Um, and, and I think you know, we could do much better in processing that.
Right now, we, we are sending all of the fish at $700 a ton. Meanwhile, if you process it, it's $2,500 a ton. When we were in government, we were looking at a cannery here. You have one very good cannery, yes. Uh, and also, if we can combine our two markets in fish, you know, we, uh, most of our fishermen can do their fishing and actually come to develop the market and sell their fish. Yeah. Uh, uh, fresh fish. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, we, when we were in government, we were very much with the view that more closer relations, collaboration with Sri Lanka would be beneficial for both our countries. You know, all Sri Lankan leaders, in 1932, for instance, yes. when we had our first constitutional government, the king dissolved that constitution and exiled the whole government to Sri Lanka. Yes. They remained here uh, for one and a half years yes. and then went back to government again. Yes. Now, your question was, would another Sri Lankan government do the same? Yes. Sri Lankan, all Sri Lankan governments have always done the same. Always. Yeah. This is a safe haven for every, every, no, it doesn't matter, matter which, which shape. Yeah. President Gayoum was here uh, yeah. during my, my, my time. Yeah. Uh, 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 most of President Gayoum ministers were here. Yeah. I mean, it's difficult. I mean, of course, this is, this is there where you come and, you come to Sri Lanka. I've had to have so many meetings here. It's now, so I need to be a little bit alone in Sri Lanka and have some, you know, have some fun with my friends, but I haven't been able to do that. So uh, I think uh, Sri Lankan people are very aware of that. Get the Daily News app free on your mobile phone. Visit apps.lakehouse.lk and download today. Daily News. Be better informed.